Hi, this is Rajiv Parikh and this is the Marketing Best of the Week for the week of May 2nd, 2013. Here's some of the highlights. Google's got a problem. Search ads aren't just for search engines anymore. Demystifying how the Facebook edge rank algorithm works. And our segment, Cool Ideas of the Week, which includes tips and ideas on marketing metrics, content marketing, analytics, and video marketing. Lots of great information for you this week, so let's get started. Google's got a problem. Search ads aren't just for search engines anymore. This is by Josh Constant in TechCrunch. The reason search advertising is so successful is because of the closest proxy to actual purchase intent. When someone searches for a car or computer and then modifies it with action terms like buy or demo. As a marketer, you know exactly what they want. Josh lays out a very simple framework for us to understand it. He has demand generation at the top of the funnel and then demand fulfillment at the bottom. Demand generation is about brand awareness. It could be a Coca-Cola contest or a funny liquid plumber video. It's all about targeting specific demographics and interests. The idea is to stick the brand into your mind. The top of the funnel versus the bottom of the funnel where a best buy ad can be connected to by camera or the term san francisco lawyer search can lead you to a page where you can learn more and set up an appointment google with its adwords offering dominated the space but facebook and twitter are now blurring the lines with the massive amounts of interest and conversational data Twitter recently announced keyword advertising. So now a tweet about a rock band can lead to an ad about an upcoming concert. Or a complaint about Sprint's network performance can lead to an ad for T-Mobile. Savvy keyword targeting like product name plus want can produce very meaningful intent-based ads on these networks. Facebook currently offers search type ahead ads as shown here with Candy Crush Saga, which can lead to similar puzzle games. With Facebook Graph Search, there's traditional bio and demographic tracking and ad units, but you could easily foresee adding type ahead search results based on keywords. People who are looking for local businesses are doing something different than looking at their news feeds. They are more likely to have high purchase intent, and that's a good reason for a local Italian place to jump ahead of their competitors. Then there's Facebook Exchange. It's a system which is a real-time bidding and cookie retargeting ad network based on websites that you've previously visited. So you would see a Facebook exchange ad for a Hawaii trip that you've searched for previously. And of course, with advertisers, we know how popular retargeting is. Before, Facebook and Twitter ad money came out of display. Now it may come out of search. It's more of a reason why they're funding Chrome, Android, Google+, uh, YouTube and have their own content network. This could, of course, refragment ad budgets, but it gives marketers more options for their brands. Check out the article, it's really insightful. Demystifying how the Facebook edge rank algorithm works. This is from two post rocket blogs that was consolidated in a single HubSpot blog. I really like this one because it takes a complex algorithm like edge rank and makes it very simple and easy to understand in a humorous infographic. Here's an overview. EdgeRank is an algorithm that Facebook uses to determine how much of your posts are seen by your friends in their news feeds. Only about 16% of posts make it. There are three components to EdgeRank, affinity, weight, and time decay. Facebook's Will Cathcart broke down the algorithm into four main social factors and two categories. First, the two categories. Personal interaction, which is the specific interaction with a set of different Facebook posts, and network interaction, a group of Facebook users and their overall reaction to specific posts. Here are the four main social factors. Number one, your previous interactions with the author. Number two, your previous interactions with the post type. Number three, the reactions are from users who've already seen the post. And number four, the amount of complaints or negative feedback. What I like is how they used Batman, Robin, Joker, and Bane to illustrate how it works. Basically, Bane will not appear much on Batman's feeds because none of these four factors will match. EdgeRank works, and you can see the results. The amount of time spent on news feeds has risen from 27% 
to 40% in the last year alone. Here's some recommendations as a result of knowing more about edge rank. Number one, keep posts short. You get 60% greater likes for posts with under 100 characters. Number two, be visual. It gets much higher engagement, in fact, 100% greater for photos versus text. Number three, ask for what you want. Opinion-driven questions and fill in the blanks get 90% greater engagement. Number four, post consistently. Stay top of mind. Number five, be relevant and not pushy. Avoid those complaints. Number six, be timely. Test the times in which you have your post. For example, for people between 18 and 24, they tend to be most engaged between 9 and 10 at night. This is really important because more people spend their time on Facebook news feeds than on the top six news sites combined. Sites like New York Times, ABC, CNN, and Yahoo News. It's a really important article and really a fun infographic to check out. And now our action-packed segment, Cool Ideas of the Week. From the Marketing Metrics article, make sure you measure lead quality by measuring average lead close rates and times to close. Compare that month over month, quarter over quarter with the different marketing campaigns that you're using to gauge their effectiveness. From the content marketing article, in your planning and assessment efforts, rank and graph your content by frequency and formality. Graph the most frequent first, like tweets versus email, and then have discussions on what's most formal, things like blogs versus an email, and then place that in the graph and assess that with your content calendars. From the analytics article, Google Universal Analytics will have a dramatic impact on how we analyze our user activity. And this occurs in two ways. First, with the measurement protocol, we'll be able to measure offline transactions like cash register data and in-store footfall data. Number two, we'll be able to link CRM data to logged in users. You can now see what age group responded to different types of content. From the video marketing article, there's significant growth in video ad spending according to Digiday and Adapt TV. 72% of video buyers have had their budget increased. 48% of those who buy video are spending on mobile video advertising. 39% are pulling their ad budget from TV, 41% from display budgets. 67% consider video marketing a direct complement to TV. At the Ad Age Digital Conference, Video was the most popular brand communication mechanism because it was the strongest means for marketers to provide an emotional connection between consumers and their brand. Thank you for joining us this week. Hope you found the information to be helpful to you. Please comment below or through one of the mechanisms we have here on the side. Email us at marketingatpositionsquared.com. Subscribe to this video and the newsletter and look forward to seeing you next week.